and welcome to Getting Your Money's Worth, the show that focuses on value. I'm Judith West, and our guest today is Lori Arusi. I said, I said the first name wrong. Lior. Lior Arusi. Okay. I, I forgot the Dior. Lior Arusi. Lior. Lior. Okay. Well, what's important is what you do, okay? Who's written a book, Customer Experience Strategy. Um, it's, this is new. This is just out, right? Absolutely new. Absolutely yeah. New. Okay, Brenda. Lior. Now I'll say it right. Okay. Um, so tell me something. You wrote a book about the customer experience strategy in 2010 where people are wondering where the customers are. It's, it's, so explain, explain that. It's a little bit of a puzzle. It's, it's indeed. And in fact, uh, last year we were asked by our clients a very simple question. Does this experience matter anymore? Because customers seem to be worried about price all the time. Or, not, or, 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 or not, not even coming in. Or they're not coming in altogether. E exactly. And in fact, we polled about 2,000 consumers in the U.S. and Canada. And we asked them that question. We asked them, does customer experience matter to you? And would you pay more for the privilege of getting a better experience? And the, the study actually took place in May. 2009 and surprisingly in such a bad time absolutely totally bad time you would think all that customer uh, care about is give me the cheapest price if I will ever if buy I, from well, you if I want anyway exactly and here's what we found out 70% of customers said I will increase my business with a vendor who gives me a good customer experience by 10% or more okay, okay? Well and, and just one minute, and about 40% of them said, if I get a superior customer experience, I'll act, I'm actually willing to pay 10% premium price for that. And that's in the, the, the heat of the toughest economy that, that consumers face. And our, our message is very simple. Yes, customers are becoming rare. They're difficult to find. However, if you don't have a good appealing experience, they will not come all together. So, the, so whatever budget is available to be spent is now going to be spent right. with well, those who are delivering a greater experience. Well, let's talk about it because you, you make a good point. Uh, when, uh, since since they are not as plentiful as they used to be, you can't open your door and have people just come in. Correct. Um, it is far more important to guard those that come in and turn them into repeat customers. Um, so, I want to talk about it when you query these customers or when you do your surveying and you ask them about customer experience, what is a customer experience? How do you define that for, for the folks Perfect. you're talking to? But we ask the same question. What are the key drivers that makes you feel that you are working with a company who gives you a good customer experience? Yeah. And those, those drivers fall into two categories, attributes and attitudes. Let's start with the attitudes because every businessman can start with those. Yes. They ranked very highly if they work with employees who are passionate. They passionate, rank, okay. Yeah, they rank very highly in, in importance, working with employees who are empowered to solve their problem on the spot so they don't need to call the manager and so on and so forth. And they rank very highly working with employees who feel like it's a privilege to be of service. So these are the, in the attitudes category, three things that every okay, businessman so, can start implementing. So passion, passion, passion and, and ability to solve the problems. issue or, or help, and um, and what was the third one? And that, that, they, that they actually feel a sense of oh, service. And, and They're they proud feel, to and be of service. they feel that the person who was waiting on them is proud. That's on the them. attitude okay. side. Okay, you know, I gotta tell you something. Maybe I've had a bad string, but I was in a major department store to buy something, I wanted to buy, and there were three salesperson, salespeople, associates, standing around. I had to go over to the gentleman, it was a luggage department, and say, I hate to interrupt the coffee clutch, but could one of you guys help me? I don't see the care about recognizing the customer at all. That's why I ask you for the customer experience. I, I think it's, you're doing good in some places just to have somebody look at you and give you eye contact. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. In fact, what happened is we've seen a deterioration over the years where employees care less and less about the customer. They're just here to make a paycheck. They don't care about it. But what companies need to understand is that the customers are becoming more and more demanding in terms of, if you want my money, you better give me okay. real good value. And what you've experienced is a typical situation situation where the, the I, department store... Let's, let's pretend. Yeah. I, I've, I, I now told you my experience. Yeah. Suppose the major department store where I was is your client. Okay. And you hear this. Mm -hmm. Okay. What would you do with that information? What would you, how would you have tackle that? Excellent. The first thing that we do when we go and tackle this is to understand why 
the employees behave the way they do. What happened is that they are getting cues from the organization. I'll give you an example in a minute. Yeah. They're getting cues from the organization that certain things matter and other things do not. So let okay. me give you an example. When salespeople get uh, compensation solely on how much they sold and not the quality of the service they deliver they will sometimes deceive the customers they will only select the customers that they think they can close business with because customer satisfaction is none of their business do you like it you don't like it you were treated nicely and one of the first things that we'll tackle for example is making sure that employees will be measured and get compensated both on the quality of the service they delivered based on customer satisfaction uh, surveys as well as based on the sales that they're doing and not solely on sales because that's when employees will do whatever it takes to close well, the what business. What are you saying? That these, these gentlemen took a look at me and thought that I was just uh uh, it was it was like six o'clock at night, six mm -hmm. o'clock, and I was dressed for business. They t took a look at me and thought I was just fishing. I wasn't. I didn't care about you, buying. You will be very surprised. You'll be very surprised how quickly professional salespeople assess a customer or a prospect and say, "Do I have a chance with this one or not?" And if not. I'm out of here. And I don't care if they like it, if you're just there to fish, if you don't know what you want, if they don't think you have a budget, and they know exactly. They will look at you, they'll assess your clothing, they'll assess your attitude. If you're just there to browse. I thought I looked pretty good out. that night. Apparently <laughs> not today. <laughs> Apparently not today. Apparently not. Apparently but, not. But that's one of the things that you need to I introduce. wound up buying, by the way, a, a, a case that was not even on sale. Because it was a brand that I recognized and felt I'd get the value for. And clearly they missed that cue. But right. that's, that's how some employees will, will, will act. Certain employees, if all they are paid is to actually okay, be on so the floor. Okay, so let's go back. So okay, do. so I mean, where, where I don't, where I'm not following, the, so we have, okay, so we have the attitude, which is that. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that one way of coping with that is to reward employees for their general across the board attitude. Correct. Who, who's measuring this attitude? How, how are the people that are making the decisions about rewarding them going to find that this out? So that I didn't run home and call up the store and say, listen, I had a very bad experience. What I said to myself, can I tell you something, is thank God I found what I wanted, but I've just confirmed my opinion that shopping in that store sucks. That's what I said to myself when I walked so out. So let me take you in. And by the way, I went I, on my way out. I told a few other people that I. Oh, what I said. Oh my God! Thank God I found something in that store because it's torture shopping there. Mm -hmm. Understood. And that's usually what happens because you spread the word and you do, you now made a couple of other customers potentially not buy there. But let's take an extreme example on the other side. American Express is known for an excellent service. In fact, their people are measured based on customer satisfaction. And they will get a large portion of the salary based on the ranking, based on the surveys, and they initiate surveys so they don't wait for you to call. They initiate surveys, they tabulate the surveys, and based on that, they determine which employees get how much. So there are companies who actually put a system in place and say, we're not just going to measure based on sales, we're going to measure based on quality. I want to ask you something, because we're running out of time. This is a very sure. interesting topic. Very often when I call up about something, I get this recording. This conversation may be recorded or maybe mm -hmm. monitored. And I'm thinking to myself, please, God, let it be recorded. Please let it be monitored. No, I can have the most unsatisfactory conversation. Nobody's ever called me and said, oh, I recorded your conversation. I found it wasn't very nice at all. Who's doing this recording and monitoring? So or is it a scam? It's not a scam. Recording is You do know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. A recording do that does take place, uh, but it's used for a different purpose. It's not used to see if you're happy. It's used to coach the agent. So they'll, what they'll do is they'll listen to the way they spoke to you, and then they'll sit down with the person who spoke to you and says, these are the things you've done right, and these are the things you've done wrong. Mm -hmm. You also need to take into account that in a traditional call center, you'll have millions of calls. So they're, like, they're not monitoring each and every one of them. They'll randomly select calls, yeah. so you may or may not be one of those. Yeah, all right. There's plenty to talk about with customer experience. Okay, so there were two things we, you, we discussed the attitude. the attitude. Now, what was the other? On the attributes. The attributes. The attributes. So the first thing is don't waste my time. Whatever you have to tell me, whatever you have to sell me, make sure that the interaction is very fast, very quick. Do people so want to be sold when they're in? The, Nobody what, likes to be sold, but everybody likes to buy. Okay, okay. so you walk in. Is it still old-fashioned? Do people like to have something, can I help you, and, you, and someone kind of walk around? Do people like that? Uh, it depends on, on different customers. 
Uh, but I would say the trend. No, no one likes to be. No one likes. No to one be... likes to be sold, but they, everybody likes to buy. Right. Okay. So the idea is, how do you create a buying experience that invites people in? And and some of the newest trends right now is to make sh shopping more experiential, more interactive, where you discover, as opposed to some person coming telling you, I think you look good in this shirt, or I think this luggage is good for you. Nobody likes to be told that, but they like to be brought in and to experience and to try. And that's where you see uh, shops like Nike are giving you chances to try the shoes, you know, play All basketball. All by yourself without any... And then if you need help, they're there to help, but they're not proactively coming to you and says, you know, I got the best shirt for you or something along those oh, lines. Okay, We're, okay. So, so I'm getting, you know, I'm, I, and I would, there's lots more, we have to reschedule, there's lots more to talk about, but you have a book, you wrote a book that says strategy on it. That's right. So I want to, in the few minutes we have left, I want to talk about this strategy. Mm -hmm. Um, you own a store, you own a chain of stores, whatever you own. The strategy of a customer experience is the same across the board. Is it, in, in general, is it not? In, pr in principle, yes. In principle, in, in yes. In principle. So, um, my sales are down, and I want to, I want my, I want, I want to make the most of every customer that comes in, and do do something different to ensure that not only that customer come in, but that that customer feels good about coming back to me. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Okay, simple way for every businessman to start thinking about. Right. When your customer is asking you for a discount, what the customer is basically saying to you is, I see your product, I see your price, I don't see the connection. Now you have two choices. You can either decrease your price or you can add more value. What the customer experience strategy is all about is how do I increase the value so they'll come naturally, as opposed to constantly okay, fighting so with discounts. How do I create? How do I do that? There are a multitude of ways you need to give learn. Me, give us a couple of them. Couple of it, a couple of them. Instead of just selling a product, help your customer experience how to actually use it and maximize it. If you buy a software, most people buy the software and use what about, about apparel? ten percent of. In apparel, um, how can you give me some uh, ideas about how to how to dress with it, what else to match with it? How can you complete the look for me as opposed to just giving me a shirt and leaving me out of there? So anything you so can help me with that. So something that kind of is like a personal shopper. It can be a personal shopper. It can be a recommendation. Right, okay. It can be a little leaflet that right. can help help customers match. Uh, uh, often customers, uh, for example, don't even know which it colors sound, are good yeah, for it them. It sounds like it sounds like what you're talking about here too is giving some uh, giving customers some attention. It's not just attention, but knowledge. Yeah. May, yeah. Educate them to be smarter about how to use your products so they can actually maximize. We it. have one minute left. Sure. What is the single best tip? for anyone out there who is in a sales position and wants to do good at it? What's the single best thing to do if you're a sales associate? Listen and stop talking. The more you'll probe, the more you'll find out what they need, the more you'll be able to ultimately close the business. Most salespeople like to talk. <laughs> okay. And that's where the first problem is. The customer doesn't want to hear another speech. Listen, 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 probe. Don't so ever assume you know what the customer wants. Don't ever assume. Probe, 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 and eventually the customer will sell themselves. And welcome them and listen. Yes. And don't assume that, per that person's not going to buy like with me. That's right. right. <laughs> don't ever assume anything. Okay. All right. Customer experience strategy. I, I liked your book, and, I, and uh, you gave us some good tips. And it's, I want to see if I can close better than I open. And it's Lior Abusi. Thank you very okay, much. Okay. Thank you very much. Good luck thank with you. Thank you, Judith.